Bruce, I'll tell you something, mate. The, the guest who we've got on for this episode of Psycho Skits Espresso is um, very, very different. Uh, a real departure from the norm because she's actually female. What about that? Our first female, female. guest. What? I know. Female. I know. It's, I know. I mean, we have, it's truth be told, we have been <laughs> fighting off supermodels, racing car drivers, yep. people that aspire to fly planes, expert yep. equestrian yep. riders and eventers. But finally... Found one person that does them all. I know. We've, and not only all. that, we've... We've not only relented, much to the relief of many of our listeners, I imagine, but not only does she does it all, she has also got her own pub. With an award-winning Sunday roast, I believe. I know, absolutely right. So we finally, I'm sure our, our viewers and our listeners are going to be delighted to know that we finally relented and we have got a racing car driving, ex-supermodel, gastro-pub owning, horse riding guest on. And of course, it can only be Jody Kidd. Voila. Jody, welcome to Psycho Schizo Espresso. I have no idea why it's taken us so long to get Jody Kidd on our podcast, but I'm <laughs> delighted, Jody, uh, to have you on Psycho Schizo Espresso. Welcome. Thank you very much. What an intro. That was fantastic. That was great. And I'm so impressed that you're you're running a pub. I mean, I, uh, how often are mm. you how often are you there and and how hands-on are you with it? I mean, I was there a lot at the beginning. We've yeah. had it about 6 years now. Um and at the beginning it was basically me and two mates. Then it was my local pub that, uh, and I live in a very lovely part of West Sussex and uh, I was born and bred here. Then I disappeared off into the world when I was modeling, doing, uh, living in Milan and New York and Paris. And then I came back here and I noticed that a lot of the little villages, all the, all the pubs are gone. Yeah. Um, mm. And and a really sad statistic is that you know we we were before uh, the 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 pandemic we were losing up to three pubs a day in the UK, mm. and um, and so uh, this local pub that I was literally a young girl we used to go for Sunday roasts and everything was closed down and developers were sniffing around and going to turn it into a house, oh. and so I said. No, we can't do this. It's a beautiful 16th century grade two listed Inglenook fire. I mean, it is Love just, it. if you close your Love eyes, it. yeah, and think of a pub, that's what you kind Love of image. It. Shame that, what's it, what's, um, what's it called? Yeah. It's called the Half Moon in Curdford, which is just outside of Petworth in West Sussex. Um, so, yeah, so I, I said, right, we've got to save it. And I got two friends that were in software. None of us had been in the F&B industry. We decided to get it and save it. And then uh, they said, right, well, we'll do the funding side. You put your name to it. You, you know, sprinkle your, you know, your your fairy dust all over it. And, and off you go. And I was like... Um, I, do, I mean, where do I get a keg of beer from? Do I go to Sainsbury's? Well, I mean, I just had no idea. So it was a very interesting, incredible blood, sweat and tears um, kind of journey that we've been on. But we've survived a pandemic. We've got uh, two rosettes. Um, and and I just was there this morning and the sun shining and it's just, it, it just, I couldn't, it, my heart was singing. I couldn't be happier. Well done, you. Um, That's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, did, but well, tough. Did, did, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like selfish altruism to do something like that because yeah, it's a fantastic right. thing to do. Madness. But at the same time, you know, it, you've got your own pub and which is, which is amazing. Yeah. I wish I had my own pub. I mean, it'd be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. You know I mean? Uh, uh, That's one thing missing from your CV, Bruce, isn't it? Oh, I'd love pub. it. You've got your own beer, yeah. haven't you, mate? You've yes. got your own beer. I've always wanted to have a, I would have a pub um, with a fencing gym attached to it. So, a so, fencing so, gym. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. What could possibly go? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> what could possibly? No, but the go idea. Wrong? That, see that I've I've been to one or two places. One or two uh, places where they have a like an upstairs pub or a bar. There's a big window, yeah. and then the, the fencing gym is down uh, below the window. So you can you've got the pub completely separate, but downstairs 
you know, you could see people, you know, doing sport and doing healthy things like that. And you've got the pub. And you could theme it around that kind of stuff. You know, that's that's my mad thing. Um, but Jody, that's just amazing. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's um, uh, R- real ale. Yes, we've Pro- got. We're, we're, unfortunately, we're we're tied. Yeah, we we've got Sussex, of course, because we're 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 in Sussex. Um, but we're tied, so we've only got one free pump that we use um for a cider in the summer, and that's yeah. a local cider, and it's a lovely story of a of a farmer that had uh was in the city for years, bought mm-hmm. this cider farm or bought an apple farm or whatever you call apple tree farm or whatever the hell the proper name is mm. um started making cider and then he managed to and i don't know where i mean this was just like obviously had a couple too much of his cider decided to buy, buy a wagyu ball uh yep. bought the wagyu ball down to the farm fed it on on the uh the kind of the the, the off the off bits of of making the cider of the apples yep um, and then, yeah, so basically it was self-marinating. So, of course, he bred it into some... <laughs> <laughs> vegan. Any ve- That's any, one of the any best vegan, lines. Any vegans watching, sorry. Yeah, that is Tough. one of the best lines we've ever heard on this entire podcast. Self-marinating. A self-marinating wagon. Self-marinating bull. bull. Wow. And we've heard some stuff on here, Jody, but I'll tell you what, that's going to take some beating. That, that one, is mate. brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. self marinated um, Zoider Ball. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Oh. <laughs> and Jody, two two AA rosettes. Now I'm into me food. Yeah. I mean, two, two AA rosettes. I mean, that's I mean, that's nothing to be sniffed at. I mean, you're into seriously good cooking there, mate. Yeah, I mean, we were lucky to have really good uh, chefs. I mean, the chefs they've kind of right. they do come and go, but because we've got a certain level that we want to put out, we've kept at that level, and we found really lovely chefs that have come in and you know kind of did their little roundabout that that um that chefs do but what we really right. pride ourselves on is that we only we, we only bring in the product pro- produce that's within a 20 mile radius so it's all oh, about wow. supporting local local yeah. producers local suppliers you know all of that and it's it's tough and it's not yeah. easy and of course it makes the costs a bit higher but We've yeah. got to support all our incredible farmers and producers yeah. of wonderful things that are in the British countryside. So we're pretty lucky. Oh, you yeah, and uh, so yeah. I mean, you're you're up up the road from uh, from Goodwood. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, which, which 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 brings me to by the time you by the time you've you know had a couple of pints and managed to sober up and had your cheese, um, you could yeah. be on the racetrack, which of course is you, you, you could. did it. You did. You were pretty big on racing, and are you still? Are you still uh, yeah. t- chucking mechanical things around? I <sighs> certainly am. Yeah, I became, during lockdown, I, I was kind of, there wasn't a lot else to do but to kind of watch the old laptop or the box. Mm-hmm. And um, and I saw that um, there was an amazing amount of kind of car influencers, should we call them out there. Yeah. And, and it's so nice doing mm. something on YouTube because it's very short. So you don't kind of, you know, it's just 10 minutes, 15 minutes and oh, there you go, on to the next. And and so I was like looking and I was going, do you know what? I can do that. I can do this. Yeah. Um, and if you do it right, it's, you know, it's really profitable. Mm. So I was like, oh, I think I'm going to give this a go. So anyway, got got a friend and I said, right, I'm going to start a car YouTube show and called Kid in a Sweet Shop. And we turned one oh, about a month ago. Um, and we're doing really well. We've got 70 odd, 80,000 subscribers. Great. Um, I, yeah, so it's not bad. It's it's getting there, but we, we're into. It's more about interviewing the people around cars. It's me, not me just getting in a car and kind of say, "Oh yeah, well this is you know does not to sixty and two. I mean, I do do that a little bit, but but it's you know we interviewed uh, Jim Farley, who's the CEO and president mm. of uh, of uh, Ford Motor Company. Last week, we did a big interview with Nigel Mansell. So it's about people that love yeah. cars. Mm. Did you have um, have yeah, you had yeah. Nick Mason on there yet? Yes, I went. He was one of my first phone calls. Yeah. I was like, Nick, I'm Great coming guy. up. And I'd, he's absolutely lovely. And I've known him because I've been in cars for a long time. Um, yeah. And I love Nettie, his wife. So anyway, so yeah. I did the show. The episode was Nettie and myself. And it was the girls doing the ultimate lunch. And she flew me because she's incredible, flies her own helicopter, yep. flew us up to the secret location where, where he keeps all his amazing cars. And we we went yeah. off in the uh, in the Ferrari 250 GTO, Oof. and I went off yeah. in the uh, in the Daytona, and we then ripped around all these roads, went to a pub, had lunch, ripped all the way back, and then got in the helicopter and drove. I mean, 
such an um, I'm still pinching myself that that day ever uh, happened. Petrol heads day out. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you oh, won't go into right. it. I, I know that secret location quite well. It's not too far away from yes. me, actually. Oh, is it? Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, amazing. Don't say it. Don't say it. No, I won't, I won't. I won't. I won't. No, I know. No, no. Well, he'll have to come on the podcast. And then we'll, no. Oh, you would be was brilliant. Up, it was funny. I was up um, uh, what, years ago. I did um, a show for Sky called Inside mm. Spontaneous Human Combustion. And, oh, amazing. Um, and so, yeah, it was very silly. I mean, they, they did a whole series of them, like inside Wayne Rooney, inside this, and, it, you know, and they, they offered me cool. to, to front the whole series. I went, I haven't got time. I said, but give me w- give me a daft one. They went, well, we've got this one. I went, I'll do it. Brilliant. Okay. So we found this bloke who makes um, explosives, really big right. explosives. I mean, the, the, the government fly them out to um, Nevada, and he blow, makes blow things up, uh, to, yeah, like really proper, like <laughs> you know, really like blowing up half a city sort of type stuff. You know, he, so he was a real boffin. Oh. He was an organic chemist, and uh, he appears on quite a few TV shows. So when they did the Dam Busters, he he made a replica of the shaped charge that blew up the dam, and then they blew up a dam with it and things like that. Anyway. Oh, turns, so we did this thing where we, we had one of the theories was that um, it's spontaneous human combustion was caused by methane buildup in the body. So mm. we wanted to, uh, to to do that. So we set up lots of plastic cows um, full of methane and we put little charges on them all and blew them up in a field. Um, but while we were oh, with, him, God, with so him... so much fun. I'm so going to watch this. So, why, so it, it's been on the YouTube somewhere. It was years and years ago. Yeah. But anyway, so while we were doing it, the guy takes us to this farm uh, mm. full of normal cows and, you know, cow pats and all the rest of it. And we mm. traipsed through this farm. And he was, he was awfully, awfully terribly, terribly old chap, sort of, chap, sort, of sort, sort of fellow that, you know, in mm. World War Two would have been sort of like, in the, you know, yeah, OSS yeah. sort of thing. You know, he goes... Uh, he Talks goes, away. Yeah, and he said, uh, yeah. he said, OK, he said, this is my place where I make all the little bangs. He's going, to, I'd be awfully glad if you didn't tell anybody this was here. Uh, because, of course, the police know it's here. Uh, and, of course, I'm not really supposed to let anybody else know it's here. Um, but um, anyway, and it's a bunker in a field. Amazing. And he opens it up with a key. And inside is enough plastic explosive C4 to blow up <laughs> half of London. And he goes, OK, <laughs> this, is, it's, this, yeah, this is my little fun. He's got a little, little bang pit down there. He said, well, I like make a few small bangs. Of course, I go out in the desert to Nevada to make the really big bangs. But of course, sometimes I have to phone up. There's one of the Pink Floyd chaps lives over the way. Over the way. You know, I have to phone him up. So sometimes I say, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a bang. Now, Nick, don't, don't worry. It'd be, it'd be a loud bang, but it'd be OK. You know, I mean, just fantastic. What a lovely oh, geezer. Amazing. You know, we were, we were doing stuff. He said, you know, the trouble with organic chemistry these days, nobody's allowed to sniff anything it stinks organic <laughs> chemistry it stinks you've got to have stinks if you're going to be a chemist you've got to know and smell it and feel it touch it taste it you know it was uh. great you know so anyway if you really are digging what is going on here on the podcast don't forget that you can get a double shot of it on patreon.com uh, forward slash psycho schizo espresso and that'll take you to the link where you can just make a little bit of a subscription and you can get all the unedited stuff um, that we thought was too scary to put in the actual show. So there you go. So you can become a Patreon and support us in our efforts to, um, I don't know, um, irrigate your mind. Enlighten people, I suppose. Yes. Well, If you want yeah. all the uncut, unedited, unfiltered stuff, basically us prattling on, just like we do on here, but uh, without any limitations at all. Yes. As Bruce says, folks, uh, jump on Patreon and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Do you know what, Bruce? Talking about bangs. Oh, you just reminded me, Jody. I've got to ask Bruce this because I'm going to yeah. forget. Okay, go, this may go, well go. appeal to you. Yeah. Bruce, you know I don't like to know what you're getting up to when we're away from <laughs> each other, right? Okay. <laughs> you know, you know I don't want to know. But a mate of mine showed me a picture the other day, right? This must be a recent Yeah, gig Yeah, yeah, probably was. Of you, you standing in front of a crowd, I don't know, about 100,000 people with what looks like a high-tech fridge yeah. strapped on your back with wires and pipes coming out mm-hmm. of it linked to a huge flame 
emanating from what looks like it's between your legs. You've got your back to the camera. What the hell is going on? Yeah, it's on a portable there? flamethrower. You see, we see, we we uh, we did a. But you look like you were on stage. I am on stage. Now I'm on. I'm on stage. I'm on this little like catwalk that I run around on up, uh, upstairs. You've got a flamethrower. I've on got the a two fisted flamethrower, <laughs> which I sort of juggle with two holsters and the microphone, because um, we've got a song called Flight of Icarus, and of course. Yeah. The, the, the 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 cover for the single Flight of Icarus. This is back in the eighties. Had our monster Eddie as with like bat wings with a flamethrower, yeah. having set fire to Icarus. So the idea was that it wasn't the sun that got him. It was it was bat wing Eddie with a flamethrower that got him. And oh, right. um, brilliant. So I just said, "Can we get a flamethrower?" And lo and behold, <laughs> it turned out that such things exist. So I strapped this thing on. It weighs about thirty pounds, and um, I went to uh, that's great whoosh you know another yeah it's great you can have a go it's so it's really easy to use it's quite safe uh, as long as you don't point it at somebody yeah it sounds really safe <laughs> oh yeah 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 uh, flamethrowers are safe yeah yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah, yeah. no I strapped it on people and yeah. said go on give it a squirt you know it's great great fun yeah. but yeah to be a hooligan, basically. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, um, I mean, uh, we we did this thing. We, we, I love explosives, um, you know, and and yeah. blowing things up and flames. Really big on flames. The more flames, the yeah. better. You know, and the closer yeah, yeah, you can get like to energy. them, the better. Jody, yeah, I should ooh. I should remind you at this stage he's also a commercial yeah. airlines pilot. So a commercial airlines pilot mm. that says he likes blowing things up, flames yeah. and explosions. Yeah, yeah. well, um, yeah. I, I don't, I'm I don't, not sure I'd want to go yeah. on a flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll check who the pilot is next time. Yeah, yeah. But do you fly, Jody? Do you fly as well? No, no, and it's 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 something that I really want to do. My grandmother got her pilot license at the age of sixty-seven. Wow. Um, and you know, Good and I, oh, I'm. I'm from a whole kind wow. of family of XRAF and kind of, you know, my grand, great grandfather was a fighter pilot. And so it's kind of, I've been up in Harriers, um, you know, I've got very close to taking my PPL, but I just didn't have enough time. Yeah. I think it's something that, that I will whenever I calm down, which I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, it's something that I love. There's something incredibly... Uh, just when you're up there and just oh t it's huge sense of freedom did you have any scares i mean um touching wood and all that um but... yeah i mean the thing is that the, the 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 training is um hopefully very good so when it comes to um you know what do you mean hopefully bruce yeah, you did have something. yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> all right okay well, you didn't just go up did you yeah i, I say hopefully because the training training yeah. in the uk is is, is actually is actually oh, right, very okay. good yes. you know but yeah. um <laughs> you know you uh the first few times something happens that's you know odd or un un unusual i mean i was once chartered to fly uh a 757 i was a first officer i wasn't the captain at the time and um we uh we only had 12 passengers on it and it was uh uh, Lord Heseltine and um, oh, God. God, uh, some bloke from the Daily Telegraph and Max Hastings Ooh. and all these, the great and the good. And there were lots of people called John Smith who all had sort of like close protection. So they all had big yeah. bulges in their chest and all the rest of it. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and we were supposed to go to Murmansk in, in Russia. And I know I, do, I didn't know why, you know. Uh, and I got this cryptic answer when I asked one of these security folks. I went, why are these, why have we got a 200-seat airliner? with 12 people on board going to yeah. Murmansk. Mm. He goes, fishing expedition. <laughs> I went, I went, special sort of fish are oh, there yes. in Murmansk? He went, yeah, yeah very big fish. <laughs> and went, went away the back. Yeah. Well, Murmansk is the head of the northern, Russian northern fleet, right? So, you know. Yes. And um, right. anyway, we ended up in Murmansk. We ended up going over the top and you couldn't see the ground because it was a bit cloud but not a problem and um basically we were there going around in circles for an hour and a half but they denied us permission to land didn't know why and the british embassy was talking to moscow saying we need to let these people land there's important people on it they said no and you know net 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 and finally mm -hmm. um they um and and you like this uh, te the high technology because we didn't have satellite or anything like that you know so mm. um uh I had my old Nokia mobile phone. Yeah. You've still got I've it. Still got 6210. It. I had yeah. it. The 62 one is it? Yeah. yeah. Still, not like, yeah you won't believe it, Jody. He still actually that one, uses that one, right? it. He's still, that one, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's, so, um, That's yeah. a new version yeah. of amazing. it, right? That's a new version of it. This is mothballed right now, but a bit, a bit like me. So, so we get over the top, and I've got this mobile phone in the 
middle of the centre console. And as we were going round in our little hole, in our little oval pattern, halfway around the pattern, I got a signal on the phone. So I could quickly bang off a text to our operations department saying, what should we do? And um, next time around the hole, the text came back, you know, just keep on going around. And then um, the Russians said that if you don't go home, we'll shoot you down. Oh, jeez, Louise. Oh. So, oh. so I thought, mm. I'd probably better go pesky, home then. Pesky fish. So, pest yeah. control, you know. So, uh, yeah, so we, yeah. We, we, uh, we we went and landed somewhere else. But, I mean, you get moments like that that are sort of slightly, oh. slightly concerning. But... Um, but yeah. you, you didn't get shot. You didn't get shot down because there's nothing you could do about it. You know, the best thing to do is to go away and hope they don't shoot you down. If they do shoot you down, you're, you're stuffed. So I mean, that's real simple. Yeah, you, know. you won't know about it for too long. Obviously, you know, somebody's got a, one of your mates has got a helicopter and has given you some stick time and uh, a yeah. bit of a uh, bit bit of uh, tuition or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how long did it take you before you could hover it? Um, quite a while. I mean, it's it, they're so sensitive. Yeah. And when you're a newbie, obviously, you know the the overcorrection and yeah. and, yeah, yeah. and it, you just get totally out of shape. So yeah. so yeah. And I, but I think that kind of racing cars and understanding, you know, kind of like less is more. And also because I spent a, a, a kind of my mm. childhood growing up was riding horses. Yeah. And you've got yeah. to be really gentle with the mouths and things like that. So I've got, I'm not, I'm not, a, you know, white knuckle kind of, um, kind of driver or rider or anything like that. So I, I kind of got it, but yes, it's very, very easy to, to overcorrect. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so when you say a long time, what, three, four hours less? Yeah. Pro maybe a bit less. Yeah. Do you think there is a crossover between, like, you know, driving fast cars and, yeah, and uh, and and kind of flying planes? And as a question for you as well, Bruce, I guess, because I've never really done either. But I mean, intuitively, as a psychologist, I would imagine that there would be quite a, quite a big crossover actually between the two. I mean, I I think totally. Once once you yeah. know your job and it's in it's ingrained in the grey matter. Then you know, and yeah. you're just getting to that flow state of your. You just you just don't think about it anymore, and that's very similar, I suppose, to to flying, as it is to 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 racing. I think. I mean, as I'm not a, a pilot, I wouldn't know, Bruce. You'd have to kind of. No, but as a racer, on. as as a racer though, as I mean, just as, as as a racer, I used to race carts when I was a kid. Um, right. yeah. and, and and so and I still you know if anybody goes uh, oh should we go and find somewhere and go and have a cart race I'm, oh yeah 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 let's you know crack on yeah brilliant but, um, uh, it, it to me it's somebody like uh, somebody like Hamilton right just picking on one driver because obviously they're all very talented but he is extraordinary not just as a as a driver but as a manager of the race, as, mm. as an awareness, a to total awareness of track position, of the of, of, of mm. tires, of juggling the environment, you know, and, and things like that. But mm. but he's, you know, as, as a driver, you're also managing the situation whilst hurtling around the track at 200 miles an hour. You know, I mean, it, it's, um, it's, it's mental gymnastics of a very high order. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of uh, like someone like Lewis wouldn't be allowed to fly and a lot of, you know, the top, top uh, racing car drivers wouldn't. But in the old days, like Nigel Mansour, he was an amazing pilot. So he mm. had, you know, it's all that yeah, of kind of subliminal stuff going on around you that your brain can com can compute and so when I was speaking to him a couple of weeks ago he was saying because when you're doing 200 miles an hour and things are you know for most people it's like oh my god what on earth is going on but he said you know after a while your brain this is how impressive our brains are is it just computes it all and it makes everything slow down and he was going you know I was seeing everything like a tenth as as quickly as what everyone else, you know, my I was slowing. I had an ability to slow everything down, mm. take everything in, and it just to be kind of like completely like a flow. Um, and, but it takes, I think, years and years and years of training to get 
to that level. Um, do you know what that's called, Jody? It's called thin slicing. And right. so, as you know, yeah, I do a lot of work with um, yeah. with um, the military and also um, with with some um, elements of the police. And actually, you find that top marksmen mm. um, have the ability in sort of like combat situations, not to go into too many details, to act, they seem to be able to slow their perception down. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they actually, um, they report this so that they almost see things in, in kind of slow motion compared to, say, a novice, where everything's going a million miles an hour. So that's really interesting. It's called mm. thin slicing, that is. Thin um, slicing. Yeah. But, you know, something else is, I've been thinking about this, and, you know, your first love was horses, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And you grew up like, you know, in a question environment. And when you look at, say, something like dressage, for example, or even show job or adventure or anything like that, you know, the best horse people are the people that are most kind of at one with the horse. Yeah. Um, the best drivers, you know, you've just been describing are people that are most at, drivers are most at one with the car. And as Bruce was saying, yeah. can manage the race and have that kind of empathy. And then I was thinking about your previous career as a model. And I'm thinking, actually, you've got this kind of extreme empathy there as well. You've got to be aware. It's not just as simple, I would imagine, as walking down a catwalk. You've got empathy for your own body movements, your, you know, the, the, the way you're walking. You've got to match the vibe um, yeah. to the kind of outfit that you're wearing. So this yeah. kind of extreme empathy, horses, driving, fast cars, modelling, kind of runs, and even the hospitality, actually. It yeah. kind of runs through everything you do. I remember I looked at your I looked at the the website of the of the Half Moon in Kidbrook, and there's yeah. this quote from you which says you're trying to create a home from home, mm. uh, which again is this kind of extreme empathy. And I, 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 I'm just dying to ask you the question whether you'd ever reflected on that that there is no. this kind of empathic awareness that goes through horses, modelling, cars, and now now yeah. the hospitality and what you no, do. It's, it's I've, okay. I really haven't at all. I mean, and, and yeah. when you said it, I was like, oh, God, yeah, actually, that's quite right. Yeah, you I kind of thought, picked up on it, as I was saying, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I, with with animals, I just thought I've always been around animals and I can understand a horse and I can kind of, I can yeah. predict a horse and I can, un- but I just thought that was because I'm from a whole family of animal lovers and I've just got that. Then the kind of the modelling, I was just, it's something that I thought was a little bit apart from what mm. I really love to do. It was just an incredible job, but it was just, it, it, you know, it was where things were out of my control. You know, I mm. I could turn up, be, you know, smartly dressed, look amazing, had a good night's sleep, and then, you know, a girl could t- turn up that's got spots all over her face and had no sleep and she'd get the job. And you'd be like, I don't understand. I'm giving up. I'm normally a person that if you give 110%, you'll get that back out. And that yeah. is animals, that's driving, that's, you know, all of those things. That's the normal kind of rule of thumb. But modeling was one thing that it didn't it didn't work like that. So for me, it was a, it took a long time to kind of get my head around that and to kind of separate that, that emotional side. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, I see, I see that. I see the kind of the flow, um, but well, funnily enough, it's a bit different. Yeah. Funnily enough, I was down the, I was down the job center the other day, <laughs> uh, trying to be a supermodel <laughs> and I couldn't see any, I couldn't actually, no vacancies. I'm sure, sorry, Bruce. No, no, no well, I couldn't see any adverts at all down there for some reason. I'm sure that like, Bruce, I'm sorry to interrupt no. him. And maybe it's the same question, but how, how, how do you, what does it take to become a supermodel? What are they looking for, Jody? What do you need then? Do you know, do you, does anybody actually know? No. I mean, there is no, there's no qualifications. There's no, you just need to be in the right place at the right time. That's what I can only get my head around because. That's where we've been going wrong, Bruce. Yeah. We've just been in the wrong, we've been in the wrong place place at the wrong time. time. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Wrong body, wrong body, wrong face. Costa and Chiswick. You're going to get noticed, are you? I know. Uh, (laughs) I mean, of course it does. It do, you've got to look a certain way. You've got to be a certain body shape and you've got to be able to move in clothes. You've got to be, I mean, I was, the shows that I did were very theatrical. Mm. You know, they were, uh, you know, Alexander McQueen. There were, you know, John Galliano. So when they, when you went, you did one of their shows, you wore one outfit because they were so extraordinary. They were like works of art rather than, 
you know, going to Milan where you had 15 outfits. I mean, you would never have 15 outfits, but you'd have five outfits and you just walked mm. around and it would say above the door, don't smile, don't clap, don't, <laughs> don't, don't do anything, just up and down. Yeah. Whereas mm. what I loved was when you were allowed to become part of the dress and the dress was becoming part of you and your character and, and it just made it so much more powerful and to go down the I mean I remember walking off the catwalk sitting on someone's lap and kind of you know doing all of this with your arms and just watching the show go by and you know you could just do whatever you want it was just so glorious and glamorous and wonderful um and I love that side of modeling I, that was I love that side. that what, what you're describing is it's interesting uh, because that element of performance did mm. you find that um in some ways, uh, at certain moments when you were out on the catwalk, you were almost having an sort of kind of like an out of the body experience that you totally. were you were kind of looking in at yourself, going, "I am just about to go and do this. It's not really me. It's just I've been taken over by the dress, by the muse, yeah. by whatever it is." Mm. I, I mean, I do the same. Th I do the same thing with Maiden. Yeah. I go on stage yeah. and I go, yeah. "I'm gonna." dramatize this song and i do stupid things and do things and throw myself into weird and wonderful shapes which i would never do down the pub you know and pe no. you know but you just you, you just go yeah, throw yourself into this lose yourself are you a very visual person i mean in terms of inside yeah. your head are you, are you are you pictures pictures words or numbers P pictures, pictures, pictures. I'm, you know, yeah, I, I'm me not, too. <laughs> uh, I came out, I came out of school with no qualifications, but you know, so, so <sighs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a, yes, very much a picture person. N numbers, I'm like, that. oh. <laughs> but Bruce, that's really interesting because presumably when you used to fly, yeah. were you still a picture yes. person or did you shift? To, you still a I picture was still person. a picture. You got to be a bit of a numbers person. Y yeah, yeah, yes, or, or yes, you, or... yes, you do. Yes, you do. And and that was one of the reasons that I took up the challenge of becoming a commercial pilot was because mm. you had all these. Well, you, you, yeah. you, it was a part of my brain that I didn't need to use. Right, because okay. I could you get away, to. I could get away with being a pictures person, you know, to till to, to the day I drop. But I was like, you know what? I want to exercise this bit of my brain because it felt like, yeah. you know, I I, mm. I had a muscle in there that 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 needed to get bigger. Um, yeah, you weren't utilizing, and I might learn something if I used yeah. it. Yeah. I might learn a sense of perspective on the rest of my life. So that's why I, that's why I did it, and it was it was alien to me. The the number flying was brilliant. I loved the flying bit. Yeah. I loved all the rest of it. You know, I mean, I love. I love to be, I love to keep testing and I love to actually be out of my comfort zone. And, you know, sometimes I'll do something and I'll go, oh, not for me. And then I'll just, you know, thank you very much. But then sometimes I'll push myself and do something that is totally not me. And I'll go, wow, this is amazing. And I think life is all about living and trying new things mm. and exploring these different sides of your brain that you can that that suddenly will go. Oh, hang on! I'm going to wake up, and you're going to be bloody good at this. So give it yeah. a go, Joni. The psychology of the catwalk. I've got to ask you about this. So, I mean, we've all done telly, and for, yeah. for me, I don't know about you two, but whenever whenever you're asked, right? Okay, you just got to walk into shot, right? As if like you know, nothing's that. Just do a walking shot. It's the right. worst, <laughs> hardest thing to do because like I find it impossible to walk as if I'm just walking somewhere on camera. Yeah. I, I usually look like some extremely stiff soldier on parade or something like you know. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. can't. Can't do it. And yeah. of course, like the catwalk is is like, well, you, you have to accentuate certain moves, I guess. But in order to yeah. be going back to what you need to be like a top model, it just dawned on me when I was when I was thinking about what to ask you that I mean, are there some people? I mean, walking is something we take for granted, isn't it? Because we all do it. We all learn it from a very, very early age. But, well, first of all, are you taught how to walk on a catwalk? That's the first thing. And secondly, are there some people? that are just naturally better at, at walking than others? I mean, I just had to ask you this question. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, when people say, what is it to, to, to you know, how do you, how, because yeah, I did 
so many years of catwalk. That was predominant what I did. And, you know, a lot of people going, oh, you know, what do you do? What do you do? And I'm saying, it's not really that difficult. Just put left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. But Mm. I did get taught. And I remember I was probably 15 years old and I was in a corridor in New York City. I can't remember which hotel it was. And uh, this wonderful walking teacher um uh, put books on my head uh-huh. and kind of like said, right, yeah, you oh, need to walk down, yeah. you need to keep your head really still, but your, oh, your hips need to be moving. And another thing is mm. that you kind of need to walk on a tightrope or even cross your legs, which puts the the hip movement in. So oh. you just kind of got to slink your way down like that. Oh, but that's try brilliant, and keep, a little trick. Yeah. Not, do, yeah. not do that with your head. But it's, yes, someone like Naomi Campbell, oh my goodness, you know, she's just incredible um, and makes yeah. it look very, very easy. And then you've got someone like Claudia Schiffer, who's not a great walker, but one of the yeah. most beautiful women in the world. She doesn't need to walk. She can do anything. She'll roll down and you're like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, there are definitely some that have got real swagger um, and 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 some not so talented. And we're talking about female models there. Is it, does the same go yeah. with male models, or are, the, are, are are like the agencies looking for something slightly yeah. different with male models? Well, I mean, they don't slink necessarily. You know, no. they're not using as much hip as we would. Um, they've just got to look really grumpy and get as many kind of like. <laughs> Bruce, like, there's hope. There's hope for yeah. us here, mate. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> we might be all right here finally, mate. <laughs> yeah, they've yeah. got to be moody and and actually wrinkles. Where wink, yeah, wrinkles, we're all right. We wrinkles, can do those. Wrinkles, yeah, yeah. Wrinkles on women. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't we don't like you know. Oh, like wrinkles. Oh, wrinkles. wrinkles. Yes, not. Oh, I wrinkles. thought you said wrinkles. No, we can do wrinkles. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I, did. <laughs> I meant to say wrinkles, but but right. wrinkles on a guy are amazing. Are they? You know, they're kind of so really? yes, character, amazing oh, wow. character. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And oh, you're all right, see- this is the best podcast we've ever done this episode, Bruce. This is great. <laughs> Look, if you could see what Bruce is doing now, you're going to love it. Yeah. That's it. You're going to be on the cover of Vogue next week for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Leanna, my partner, right, uh, used to be a model. Yeah. Okay. But not not catwalk model. She was like photographic model. And she she quit like years ago. You know when she was she was doing uh, woolly woolly sweaters and woolly sweaters and bras Aww. for forty year olds. And she went, it's about time to hang up the uh, you know the the thing. Yeah. But yeah. but she was um, saying how uh, when she was doing it, there was a a significant amount of. Um, Interfe- uh, well, potential inter- interference, what's the word? Harassment, uh, basically, mm. by some of the photographers and things like that. And it was just a given, mm. you know, people would be, and she she said, mm. you know, I, I I always just said, well, you can piss off, you know. <laughs> it says, yeah. No, I'm not going to go to bed with you uh, and you're not going to make me a star because that's crap. Uh, but how prevalent is is that still in in mm. the industry? I mean, I know it's all everything now is you know politically correct and gender neutral and blah de blah. Not how really. much of that is yeah. how much of that is window dressing, and how much underneath it all is mm. it still is it still uh, there underneath the whole thing exploitation? Yeah, yeah. I mm. mean, very much so. I mean, when I started mm. in the mid nineties, yes. I mean, it was very. It was like you know, if you if you can shag well, you can go straight to the top kind of thing. That was, you know, that was um, kind of well known, shall we say. But it's that I was very lucky to kind of come out of my little kind of, you know, country lifestyle. I got picked by, um, I got picked out of a crowd by um, by Terry O'Neill and I immediately got put on quite a pedestal. So I did really well and I missed all of that yeah. middle section of you know getting the pictures putting them in a book having to go all the way around to all the different photographers all here all the different style you know traipsing around where you can get put in in quite difficult situations and Mm. yes it was very I was very aware of it um back in the day but I wasn't subjected to it yeah um and I I I feel very lucky about that because I've heard some real kind of horror stories and nowadays because of what's happened to you know Harvey Weinstein and the Me Too movement 
there's you know they they've got to be very careful and uh, uh, of course Mario Testino so it goes mm. you know both ways it's not only yeah. the girls yeah um, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so, yeah, yeah. Yes, so you've got to be, you've got, they've got to be much more careful. And of course, we've got social media nowadays, which we didn't yep. have in those days, where you know you can reach out and you can be slightly more anonymous, and you would have a support system of people coming in and going, "Oi, that's not right. You need to speak to that person or this person," yeah. which we didn't have twenty uh, odd years ago. And it, and people photographers even you know even horror stories of 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 model agencies mm. um was not a good was not a good place but i you know i was very lucky to to miss all of that and and then and then at the end of my career i i just stopped immediately i didn't i never wanted to really be a model um I just kind of did it and and I I feel very 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 uh thankful for for that because yeah there was a lot of liberties taken. Yeah, yeah. Jody just jump, jumping in on on the back of what Bruce said there. And that is that well two questions in one really. They're kind of related. First of all, everyone thinks of modeling as like completely glamorous and you know champagne swilling <sighs> parties in New York and yeah. Paris and all this kind of stuff and um I'm sure it goes on, but I'm sure the, there's also a lot of hard work behind the scenes, a lot of practice, a lot of a lot of discipline. You you know probably when I'm just making this up now, but you know when you're exhausted from yeah. you know hours and hours and hours of practice, you've still got to you know work on the high heels or getting the walk right, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So one of the questions I was going to ask is like, is to what extent does does you know you might have the looks, you might have the natural ability, all that kind of thing, but to what extent does drive and discipline and, de- and determination help you to become a top model? And the second thing, which is kind of related to what yeah. Bruce was saying there, is like sport um you know where you need drive determination and discipline obviously now at least has mental health structures and support networks in place um you know related to what bruce was saying i mean how how does modeling fare in those stakes are there mental health support networks now in place for people that might get abused for instance or for people that you know might not make it and have their dreams dashed I mean, you know, it's one of like I I kind of touched on it earlier, but it's one of those things that, you know, I've got plenty of drive and plenty of determination, but actually it goes out of your control and it's it's up to someone else. And so you've almost got to separate that and and understand that you get constant rejection constant 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 and you can be you know the most beautiful person on the planet and you're still getting told you're not too you're not good enough your bum's too big your eyes are too this color the, 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 you put a bit too much you know your boobs are too small you're <laughs> constantly mm. you know taking a battering um yeah. and i suppose that that's the real big negative on on whether you're kate moss or whether you're um you know serena you know, with, that's just got her first test shots and is going around yeah. town for the first time. It doesn't yeah. matter. Everyone still gets rejected, and so the 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 kind of determined side, it doesn't really work. It doesn't. Mm. You you can you can be very sure. very professional, and yes, of course it will it will help. But you're you're there's a whole big like load of people above you that have to make up that decision art directors photographers you know the client the da, 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 that goes on and you've got to be the perfect person for all of them which sometimes yeah. just is totally non-existent yeah um, well it was like we were saying earlier like your your kind of mentality is like you know give 110% and you get your you get your get just rewards out. but yeah. but actually did you did you find that difficult to deal with in modeling then that you're, really? you're suddenly thrust into a world that doesn't kind of marry up with your own mindset and how yeah. you think the world should work did you find that difficult absolutely I found it incredibly hard and that's where I actually stopped modeling at the height of my career because I was suffering right. suffering from from mental health uh, problems okay. and I had anxiety right. I got I wouldn't say it was depression but this was 90s no one really talked about mental health sure. um you know I went to a doctor saying I can't sleep I'm getting I can't breathe my my you know my palms are sweaty I don't know what's going on I wasn't you know it was I was just in a, getting in a really negative circle and I was put on beta blockers oh. walking around like yeah. a zombie I was wow. like uh, um, you know all of these things yeah. that no one talked about mental health like they do now yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so I I had to stop at the height of my career because I was like this is not 
good for me. And I think that's because yeah. my whole outlook in life is you put what you get back out. Yeah. And and I it was t- out of my control the industry and I couldn't yeah. I couldn't prove that I was good enough, even though I was yeah. had a wonderful career, you're still getting no, 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 and you'll get one job out of ten or whatever. So I, I think for me mentally, it just it started grinding quietly in the yeah, background, sure. to the point yeah. where I was like, do you know what? I I want to go back to the country. I need to start growing my own veg again. I need to get fit. I need to see nature. I need to go for walks, and I just had to turn everything back around because I was I'm com- I'm competitive yeah. I couldn't be yeah, yeah, competitive yeah. in an industry that it you don't have first second and third really you don't you can't it's you can't it's win and you thing. and yet you went straight you win. went straight to yeah it's ironic isn't yeah. it it's I ironic know. Jody because you you kind of went straight to first without having to battle your way up there and stayed at first yeah. but the, but the stress I mean I I, com- I completely get what you're saying um Jody because you are um, you're completely trapped. If you're an athlete, mm. and you know first, second, third, right? If you're an athlete, hundred meters, yep. whatever it is, the first three, the f- the fastest three, get it. If you come eighth, that's then that's it. You're eighth, and you can make yeah. sense of that. You can go away. You might be pissed off. You might be a bit depressed that you're eighth, but you're eighth, and 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 yeah. and, and, and that's it. That and you you can accept yeah. that because it's it's straightforward. It's competition. I tried. I didn't make it. They did. Yeah. I, I try again, yeah. try again, and eventually I'll, you know, take up tiddlywinks. But you can work on it. You can work on it. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But you have no choice in modelling and indeed in acting as well to an extent. The same, there's the same sort of things. You are powerless. You're basically a marionette for yeah. other people. And yet uh, people assume you have some level of control. And this must the huge mismatch how does it work in music, mate? I mean, to, to I was when 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 um, Jody was talking about you know there's there's other people in very powerful positions that make the decisions. I mean, is it true to a certain extent these days? I mean, I'm not sure. Possibly years ago, it would have been a bit different. But these days, you might be the best band in the world, mm-hmm. but actually, if the people who are you know wearing the suits and making the decisions don't particularly think you're part of the narrative, then you know you're still going to be playing in pubs. I mean, is that is that a certain extent true in music? To or, to to or? to to. to... To a certain extent, in all areas of entertainment, when you have a big corporation, big groups, you know, powerful, uh, powerful men, and it usually is still men, uh, mm. although there's a few, you know, glimmers of of, of light, but even when it's uh, uh, women, it's very often women who are acting in the same abusive way as the men. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which is how yeah, yeah, actually so that's true. There's research research has shown that yeah. is sadly yeah. true. So yeah. so yeah. so yeah. there's it's not it's yeah. not like they're wonderfully yeah. inclusive or they they're, they're actually no. sometimes they're even right. worse than than, that, than, right. than than the blokes. I think what has what has maybe muddied the waters a little bit is this whole idea. I mean, and you brought it up actually early on, Jody. I was trying to think of a way of framing this, but we've actually arrived at the point where we could talk about the elephant in the room which is um, social media, because Mm. you are now set up as an influencer to do with cars. But at the same time, and musicians similarly, I mean, back in the 70s, Mm. they started their own little labels, the punk bands. And Mm. then people jumped on that and went, oh, what do you mean you're putting your own records out? Only big companies do that. So then other people did it back in the days of black vinyl. And we're now at a similar situation where people are starting their own things online, their own TikTok channels and, and all the rest of it. Mm. And eventually they get hoovered up by the big boys who go, oh, we'll buy your TikTok channel off you and we'll give you a career. But there's there's ways and means. Does that exist as a possibility in modelling? Because there are influencers. I mean, I mean, it used to be that, I mean, this is what we're going to talk about this in a future episode, Kevin. It used to be that if you wanted to be... Uh, <laughs> for want of a better word, a porn star. You had to go to a a place where they made porn movies and then you would be abused and blah, 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 blah. Okay. But now people who want to be porn stars get together with their boyfriend and go and just film it. Do it on the internet and and they make their own money and they choose what they want to do and that's their own life and boom, 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 and away you go. Could the same thing exist in modelling? Probably not because of the brands involved, Mm. I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. But also, I do think a 
d- massive difference between, you know, being, you know, a massive pop group is you've got such a big fan base and the fans mm. are going to be the ones that will follow you. Um, so, yes, you could, you know, you could have managers that could be, you know, complete shits or whatever. But you, predominantly, you've got this pool of people that you could just do anything and, and they love you and they love your music. Whereas I suppose mm. in modelling don't really have that as you as you touched on there Bruce they they love the brands more really I mean unless you're part of those you know the glorious 80s you know super super models uh, or your Cara Delevingne or something there's it's a very small little group that are Mm. more powerful than the brand so Mm. you're kind of constantly under this this kind of this pressure of of you know you can't be free but but social media is really changing that you know now nowadays brands are saying if you want to come and be the new face of our 2022 spring summer campaign um you have to have over a million followers you have to have right. because you they're understanding you know the power of uh of social media so the l'oreal campaigns nowadays you you will not get even you could be the most beautiful person to ever walk this planet you won't get it unless you've got a certain amount of followers um, wow. So it's all kind of balancing, but you know, yeah, being a rock yeah star. and yet more pressure. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad yeah. I became a rock star when I did because uh, you know, yeah, uh, it, 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 in some ways, all that although you have z- zero z- less to zero to less than zero chance of making it back then. It's the same way now, really, yeah. I suppose, in a way. Um, it just it was just done everything was just a bit more straightforward it's a lot it was really exactly. you have to you be know, working on multiple fronts now you know do you know oh, what oh, i'm oh. glad i became a psychologist when i did yeah oh, you know, driven, i'm glad i never went into yeah. the rock business yeah. or it would have driven I'm you mad otherwise so <laughs> i'm just yeah. so grateful i found psychology and not rock music and modeling or did psychology find you <laughs> Jody, I've got to ask you. So you, you, I mean, your love of, if I'm right, your love of speed and racing and all that started when you were invited onto Top Gear and you did the fastest yeah. lap at the time, didn't you? Yeah. Um, and then I think your love of speed came from that. So I've got to ask you this, like this kind of like the elephant in the room. You were snapped up as a model at the age of, I think it was 15 or 16, 15, wasn't it? You, yeah. you went straight into modelling. But before that, you were really into horses, weren't you? And after mm-hmm. that, you got into cars, you know, driving fast cars and racing. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever, in your quieter moments, reflect and think back, if I hadn't have gone into modelling, how good could I have been at horses? And how good yeah. could I have been if I'd have actually gone into the racing properly? Do, do, you, ever, do you ever think about that? Yeah, I mean, I do, but I try not to entertain that because I really hate right. regretting and living in the past and it's all about tomorrow yeah. or now, right now. So, yes, occasionally it comes in and I go, God, you know, I could have, could I have been on the British team show jumping? Yeah, mm. probably could have, you know, but then wow. I just don't entertain it. Move on. I'm all about yeah. now and and what I'm going to do in half an hour's time. Probably have a glass of wine. You know what, Tony? <laughs> that is that is such an extraordinary. I think that's such an extraordinarily yeah, healthy attitude. It's uh, it it's is great. yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, def- you know? Definitely. Um, yeah. No, because show, I mean, I mean, show jumping is a tough. Old. Was it show jumping or eventing? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. My dad was um, almost on the Olympic team for show jumping, so I, I just, I wanted to. I wanted to follow in his footsteps yeah. and um and yeah so that was my dream. My sister was um, almost it, on the Olympic team for show jumping as well. Really? Yeah. In, oh, in, amazing. In Germany. Oh. Yeah, she fantastic. she missed That's really tough out there. She she wow. missed the Barcelona Olympics by one place and they won the gold. Wow. I had no yeah. idea about that. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. You're still riding, Jody, yourself? No, I kind of You don't I okay. kind of, no, I, I think when I had Indy, who's 10, he's my son, I just right. went, oh, no, I don't think I want to, you know, break my back today. I'd rather, you know, right. crash a race car instead. But, <laughs> so, but it's a bit, it's, sa- um, it's safer. Honestly, crashing safer. a race car is safer. It is safer. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. You've got five bar harnesses. You've got, you know, you've got, um, you've got... St- marshals everywhere you've got you know it's it is a lot safer and the horses 
I just started getting a little bit, not chicken, but I just, okay. you know. Um, and yeah. so I just went, do you know what? I've done that. Put that to bed. On, on to the yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah. I still love them. I've got two here. No, no. Well, Elaine, as you know, my partner, she she had her own horse yeah. when she was younger, growing up in in um, in uh, in Dublin. And uh, she's uh, she when we first started courting, there's a, there's a word you don't hear anymore. Courting. Oh gosh. Oh, I were courting, courting. Were you, Kevin. Oh, yeah, I. we were courting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that word courting. I love the word frock Lovely. as well. Frock. <laughs> If I say to Elaine, you've got a lovely frock, it instantly gets her on edge. Oh, frock. But anyway, yeah. we were courting years ago um, and I was trying to impress her. Um, she, uh, We lived in Colchester at the time and there's a big army equitation school in Colchester. And um, she had uh, she started getting back into horses again. So she was having regular lessons. She was a good rider when she was younger, but hadn't ridden a horse for years. And she said to me, oh, would you like me to book you 10 lessons for your birthday? So I said, trying to impress her, I said, yeah, sure, absolutely, it'd be great. So anyway, I had these, they were on a Wednesday after, Wednesday morning, I always remember it. And I thought to impress her, I, I, I had no idea what people wore for, you know, uh, novice oh, horse God. riding lessons. So I'm, I'm telling this on a public forum, I'm cringing as I'm telling this, I invested in the top dressage gear. <laughs> I had the blue blazer with gold buttons. I had these <laughs> Jodpers, I think you call them, which I yeah. can hardly get into. Yeah. And I had the top hat as well. Oh, I had the hard of full English. Yeah. Thing. And I walked in there to this little kind of arena with all the sand, and there are about five middle aged blokes there in <laughs> jeans and wellies <laughs> and jumpers. And I walk in like Lord Fontal. Yeah. Right. I couldn't even get on the horse, right? I had a mounting oh block. God. I couldn't get my leg over because it was too. To, Debris, things were too bad. And Elaine says to this day, if the ground could have opened up and <laughs> swallowed me. <laughs> Basically, that was it. I've still got the dressage gear. I, I've still got it. Comes you know, in handy, does it, it, from time to time, Kevin? It does come in handy from time to time. Do you know what we call that? We call that all the gear and no idea. Big hat, no cattle. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that's yeah. me. Yeah. That, yeah. I've, uh, Jody, I've made a career out of that, mate. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> I've made a career. Quick one before you go. Quick one before you go, mate. So Hickstead's like the gold standard for show jumping. Monaco Grand Prix, yes. I believe, is like where, you know, that's the most prestigious yeah. Grand Prix circuit. Yeah, motor racing, what yeah. is the Is there the equivalent in modelling? What is the catwalk? Is there a catwalk that every model would aspire to walk down? I mean, it would be probably doing, when Karl Lagerfeld was alive, it would be doing Chanel, I think. It doesn't okay. really beat, yeah, that's pretty much right. the top. That, that's in Paris, is okay. it? Yeah, that's in, that's Paris, in Paris. Yeah, but I would have to say it was when it was when Carl was, you know, at the helm. Okay. That was that was the the pinnacle. Bruce, is there a bucket list stadium that you've never played that you've all, that, you'd, that you'd really like to play? Uh, yeah, I think uh, River Plate in uh, Buenos Aires. Oh, yeah. mm, Buenos Aires. Uh, yeah. Stade de France. Crazy. Stade de France. Oh yeah, you know right. River Plate, yeah, yeah. Stade de France. Funnily enough, not Wembley. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Cardiff. Oh, yeah, Cardiff, Cardiff. A fantastic stadium. Yeah. I've yeah. jumped there. I've jumped in Cardiff yeah. the Millennium. Glastonbury's on at the moment. Have you ever done Glastonbury? No, no. Full of full of yeah. yurts and posh people. Oh, I no. hate it. <laughs> right. yeah. I've been like what? five times, had very nice digs to stay in, and I've stayed one night, got totally overexcited, and got in the car the next morning, run away! Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just like... Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Jody. there's a gaff we certainly want to go down to, don't we, Bruce? I think it's the half moon in... in uh... moon. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no, definitely. <laughs> That's right. How far are you from good... How, how far are you from... Well, you're near Petworth, aren't you? So there's a station. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes. Curdwood, isn't it? Yeah. That's Curdford. Right. Curdford. Curdford. I'll tell you what, Bruce, I'm back I'm back from Australia uh, later on in the year. Hopefully we'll overlap and we'll get ourselves some bit, a bit, of, bit of grub and some and some I good can't beer. Splendid idea. Daddy's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday roast. Wait. Oh, Sunday. the best Sunday roast oh. south of Watford Gap. I'm right. telling you, that's right. And Jody, we're <laughs> going to work on our winkles and our wrinkles. Winkles. Well. So when we get down yes. there, we'll get down there. Claudia Wrinkleman. <laughs> Cloud- very good. Very good. Right. <laughs> like I it. think I think that is the cue to end. Yeah. This. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank Jody. you so much for having me. Oh, it's really, oh, look, really fun it was session. Absolutely really great. Fantastic, mate. Well, thank you for being with us for another episode of Psycho Schizo Espresso. If you want to become a patron, then please do patreon.com forward slash psycho schizo. 
Espresso. And in the meantime, just don't forget, if you're watching us on whatever platform, whether it's YouTube or Spotify or whatever, don't forget to just uh, give us a little nudge if you like what we're doing and like us. And that way, more people will get to hear about it and we can spread the gospel of... Psycho Schizo Espresso, I think, Bruce, isn't it? Yeah. The gospel, gospel of je ne sais quoi. Yeah, the gospel of Psycho Schizo Espresso. Folks, you won't regret it. Well, you might, <laughs> but it'd be too late by then anyway. So yeah. there you go. Help us spread. Help us spread the news. Yes. Mm-hmm.